Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Yosha and I'm the go-to channel for all things real. Today, I'll be answering how you can increase your engagement with watch time and subscribers in Facebook groups. So to get right into the video, I'm gonna start off by saying that when you enter a Facebook engagement group space, you have to understand that you are in a space of like-minded individuals. There are some people that are going to be in your niche that want to be a big YouTuber as much as you do. But the reality of it is sometimes in Facebook groups, you see people doing sub for sub and it helps. You might end up getting 100 new subscribers in a day if you are really working at it. And then about two or three days later, you look and your subscribers drop by like 30 people. And that's because a lot of times when people do sub for sub, YouTube either counts it as spam because you're not really watching the person before you subscribe, or that person that actually subscribed to you will go back and unsubscribe after a couple of hours because they don't really wanna be subscribed in the first place. So the first thing that I'm gonna say is that the sub for sub thing really does not work. The better thing to do is to try to find people in your niche and build relationships with them. So whenever there are threads that ask questions like, where are the beauty influencers at? Where are the people in this state? Where are the people that are interested in gaming? That is your opportunity to shine. That is your opportunity to stand out. As a person that loves engagement groups and loves connecting, I am a YouTuber that YouTubes, which means I like to watch content and I don't mind. But the biggest thing that will turn me away from someone is someone that doesn't necessarily engage genuinely. And it's because we all have the same end goal in mind. So it's one thing for a stranger to click on my video, watch for a couple of minutes and click off. It's another thing for a person that has done the research about YouTube and understands how watch time is important and engagement is important to basically screw up the next person's engagement. So you have to be careful about your image, okay? Not only making sure that you're being nice to other people and respectful, but also that you don't get a bad stigma about you as being the person that being the person that likes for others to engage on their channel, but you never want to engage back. Now, I am not telling you that you have to subscribe to everybody that subscribes to you. That is not something I'm ever gonna say because as a person that enjoys watching content, when I wanna view my subscriptions on Saturday and binge watch because I want to, you wanna find people that you're really gonna bond with because that and those type of relationships are gonna build your network. You're gonna have people that know you and like you for who you are. So when you do try something different, you have people on your side. When you do that first live video, you have friends that you made in those groups that will pop in for 15 minutes and show you some love. They may buy from you. They may sign up and use your affiliate link because of the relationship that you built. If you go into it me focused, you're not gonna get as much out of it. So as far as increasing your watch time, I recommend that you do engagement games that require you to watch in exchange for watch. Now I'm not telling you to go and cheat the system or do anything that YouTube does not want you to do, but what I am saying is if you do a game that requires you to watch and like and comment a video and you're receiving the same thing in return, then you're getting something, they're getting something, it's fair. You may even gain a subscriber out of it if your content is good enough and the person likes you enough to subscribe. Everybody who does a lot of Facebook promotion and get a lot of traffic from Facebook, if you go to your analytics, you're gonna see that you have a lot of external traffic. And external traffic is traffic that did not come from YouTube. External traffic is not bad. If you're doing most of your promotion on Facebook for your YouTube channel, you're doing a bunch of sub for sub games and this over here and that over there and you're clearing your history and all that, YouTube can't really help you the way you think that it is because you're trying to cheat and get yourself there. So I encourage you to focus on trying to get more of that YouTube traffic, that external search traffic that's not just from what you're doing in the games. Something that I challenge you to do is spend time on the platform. Watch people that do content that is similar to yours. If you don't have somebody that's similar to you, like for instance, if you're not necessarily a niche, but you're more of a lifestyle because you're a bucket, you're miscellaneous, 
that's fine. But you got to pay attention to something to get an idea of what is working. Because if you go into it blind, you're not going to know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, then the chances of you finding success are slimmer because you're just like shooting darts. It's random. You might hit the dart in the middle. You might not. You might hit the target. You might not. So the basic thing that I want y'all to get from this video is that you're going to have to put in some work to get to where you want to get to. There are some people that go viral, but going viral is not everything that is cracked up to be unless you go viral with something that's evergreen. If you go viral with evergreen content, that means that you will continue to get views on that video for the years to come. Most of my viral content is still sustaining my channel because it is searchable content. I have not had a trending uh, viral video yet, and I'm okay with that. Now, if I get a trending viral video, hey, how y'all doing? But you got to understand that that attracts people that are going to want you to do the same type of video again. So you have to be careful with hopping on these trends if that's not what you really want to do. It's better to go viral doing something that you can deliver again than to go viral doing something that you just did because you were trying to go viral. Because what will happen is when you start doing other videos that are not around that same niche or subject, you're not going to get the views. You're not going to draw people that were interested in you doing the cinnamon challenge or, you know, the worst makeup that you've ever got done challenge or you know, let them pick the food or whatever challenge is popping for five minutes and they're going to suddenly want to listen to your sit down videos. If that was not what they were there for in the first place, they're probably not going to change. And it depends on your target audience too. If you can go viral doing something you love and you are in a perfect spot because you won't get as tired of doing it. It's not to say that as a beauty influencer, you don't have some beauty influencers that get tired of trying on makeup, that get tired of trying on clothes, that get tired of doing the same type of videos over and over again. But if you are somebody that really does not like doing silly content and you go viral doing challenges and pranks, and then after about 50 pranks later, you're like, oh my gosh, I would love to do something else. Please watch something else. And you're getting like 50,000 views every time you do a challenge, but you get 2,000 views when you do something serious and you want to do something serious. You're going to be frustrated in YouTube and you're going to feel like you're stuck in a box. And quite frankly, you will be. So I just want to give y'all that advice to say that you got to use YouTube and your engagement opportunities wisely to find your niche. And then from there, when you find your niche, you got to focus on your audience. Like think about who you're making these videos for and if that audience is going to change as you evolve and how you can make the transition. Everything about YouTube is strategic. Like it can be fun and it can be games, but at the end of the day, if you're trying to make it a business, you have to have a business plan. You have to know what you're doing. There has to be a beginning, a middle, and an end. If you don't know what you're doing, then you basically like shooting darts playing a lottery. Like you might hit and you might win that scratch off or you might not. So I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. I want to thank you for watching and be sure to check out my YouTube tips playlist in the comments below because I have other YouTube insights, everything from how to start, what to do when you're a new YouTuber, you know, engagement groups, breast practices, long videos, short videos, and even how to make money. And I also have some other stuff on my channel too, as I am a lifestyle vlogger. So I want to thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.